Okay, I'm with uh, Dr. Alison Cook from the Danish Society of Engineers uh, here in Cancun. Um, what, what is it? Tell me a little bit about the project that you're, you're working on. Well, I'm involved in an international engineering project called Future Climate, and I'm linked with the Danish Society of Engineers and here with them this, this COP16 because I'm based uh, in Cambridge University Engineering Department and I am a fellow of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers and we're looking at how can we meet the global energy demands for the world and at the same time limit the temperature rise to within two degrees. How are we engineers going to provide the solutions to achieve that? And can we meet the uh, energy, energy, energy demands of the world from your study so far? Well, if I just pick the uh, UK's version for an instance, although we have many countries involved, um, we have targets in the UK of reduction of greenhouse gas emissions to by 80% towards 2050. And uh, to do that, our Institution of Mechanical Engineers plan, its bottom line says that for, to achieve that goal for the government, we have to reduce our energy demands by 50%. And at the same time, we have to ramp up on practically every area of energy supply we can. So that includes renewables and nuclear. Now, some of the other countries um, which I've alluded to, they will have a different blend of energy supply in their plan. Uh, we have developing countries involved and developed countries involved. And I've got my Danish colleague here is with me, you'll, you'll be speaking to later. Their plan will look very different to ours in the UK. But some of what you've learned in the UK, some of what they're learning about in Denmark, can that criteria be applied to countries which are very different, uh, for instance, somewhere like India? Very, very much so. In fact, we had an, an international conference in September 20, 2009, just before COP15, where 10 of these countries gathered and India was there. You mentioned India and we were sharing ideas at that conference. There was a very positive feel in that room, you know, perhaps 200 people, including diplomats and ambassadors. So we were feeding into you know, the, the policy end as well and the decision makers. And we were sharing ideas with the Indian at the Institute of Engineers in India. Right, and presumably a conference like this, okay, the main aim obviously being to reach agreement at the end of next week or some kind of agreement by the end of next week, mm -hmm. but there's an opportunity to share information, to share uh, progress you've made on various uh, development schemes. It must, must be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're sharing with many different people. I had a really interesting discussion with the African Centre, Climate Policy Centre. They, they obviously in Africa can almost start from a blank sheet. So when you, when you asked me just now, can we share this? They were saying how exciting if we get involved with this now we can plan our energy from scratch whereas we in the UK almost can't do that if you see what I mean so so yes there have been many interesting conversations and very worthwhile coming to COP16 to do that what I would like to see more of though is a voice for engineers in the UN processes because at the moment we see a lot of science coming out from the UNFCCC uh, processes but actually the engineers are about providing the technological solutions to those to that scientific data, and that's where I think we need to improve. So why is that? Why have engineers not had a voice, or not had a sufficient voice until now? I think that's a, a very historical question. Certainly in the UK, there's always a little bit of a um, interesting dialogue goes on between scientists and engineers. I mean, I think the sensible reason why that might not have occurred is, of course, if you choose engineers from a private sector, which obviously might have a conflict of interest then that could be dangerous because you can't actually have a rational objective plan looking forwards if you're actually representing one particular sector. However, what I think is very in unusual and important about our project is that it brings together the professional engineering institutions around the world and not the sectors. So we represent members who work in different sectors but we don't, we don't have to answer to them if you like. So we're sort of quasi independent if you like. So, I mean, are, you trying to, are you saying that the engineers perhaps have been seen as the villains up until now or into some of the people causing the problem? Or, I'm not sure I understood. No, 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 not the villains at all. But I mean, obviously, if you are a, a private company um, working in, a, in the energy sector, then you, you have to be driven by your bottom line. And so therefore, you will have a vested interest in perhaps in the way you actually pr um, predict a national energy plan. Whereas what I'm saying, the important thing that I'd like to get across is that the engineering institutions are, are in, more independent than that. And so if we're going to have a voice in, in, 
in something like COP16. Then the engineering institutions brought together from around the world representing, you know, at the moment a half a million engineers around the world are pretty much represented in the engineering institutions we've got. And, and so that is a very powerful independent voice for the engineers. Okay, thank you very much. Is that right? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah.